Now we have the seasons. Now, what causes the seasons on Earth? We experience different seasons. You have the winter, the summer, the fall, and the spring. So what causes that is that the Earth, the sun's rays will cause, <clears throat> the sun's direct rays will cause the different seasons. Now, the Earth is not straight like this. The Earth is actually tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees on a line, as you see here, on a line that is perpendicular to the plane of the Earth's orbit. So this is a line that is the plane of the Earth's orbit as it orbits around the sun. And this line right here is perpendicular. It makes a 90 degree angle with that plane of the Earth's orbit. And you see how this is the uh, ax axial tilt. You see how it's tilted back 23 and a half degrees to a line that is perpendicular to the plane of Earth's orbit. Now this tilt will cause different seasons. And sometimes it'll be hot in the Southern hemisphere and sometimes it'll be hot in the Northern hemisphere. There are two reasons, two main reasons why a place is hot or cold on Earth. One reason is the angle of insulation, which means how direct the sun's rays are. So for instance, uh, how direct the sun's rays are and insulation, insulation means incoming solar radiation, which means radiation from the sun. So there's two main ways for a place to be hot or cold. The first way is the angle of insulation. If a place gets direct sun rays from the sun at 90 degree angle, that is the that is the most intense angle to get at 90 degrees, that is going to be the hottest place on earth. If it's going to be, let's say, a, a less angle like 40 degrees or 15 degrees, it won't be as hot. It will be much colder. That is called the angle of insulation. If you have direct sun rays, it's going to be the hottest then compared to a place that's say in the North or South Pole, which will get less direct sun rays. The second way is the duration of insulation, which means duration, how many hours of daylight that place gets. So since the earth is tilted, if you see here, for instance, in the Southern hemisphere, they're getting more duration of insulation. <clears throat> so we'll see, since the earth stays tilted as it orbits around the sun, you will have the different seasons. So first you have you have four seasons and you have uh, 12 months. So every three months is a new season. So first we'll start off with the winter solstice. And ironically, <clears throat> that is when the, the earth is closest to the sun actually during the winter solstice. And we really refer to, we're really talking about the Northern hemisphere, what they are experiencing in the Northern hemisphere. So it, so in the Northern hemisphere, we have, first we have the winter solstice on about December 21st. And that is the first day of winter. And what happens is, is the sun's rays hit directly at the 23 and a half degree south line, at the 23 and a half degree south line, which is the Tropic of Capricorn. And since it hits directly at this point here, then the Southern Hemisphere will be facing towards the sun and will be hotter. The nor Northern Hemisphere where New York is located, where located in New York, which is in the US in the Northern Hemisphere, it is tilted away from the sun. So it's going to be colder since we're tilted away. We get less direct rays from the sun. In the Southern Hemisphere, they get more direct rays. So it's going to be hotter, but it's going to be colder for us in the Northern Hemisphere. So for someone in New York, someone in New York, the sun will appear much lower in their daytime sky. Say so here on December 21st, on December 21st, the sun will appear much lower in our daytime sky because we're tilted away from the sun. Now, also, we have less duration of insulation. We got less hours of sunlight. You can see the North Pole is completely in darkness. But in the Southern Hemisphere, they get more hours of sunlight. For us in the Northern Hemisphere, we get less hours of sunlight. So for those two reasons, less direct rays and less duration of insulation, it's going to be colder in the Northern Hemisphere. Therefore, it's referred to as the winter solstice. Now, again, three months later, after December 21st, you then have March 21st, and you have the first day of spring. This is called the spring equinox, and the sun's rays hit directly at the equator, directly at the equator. And it's called the equinox because it's equal, that all places on Earth will have 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. It's going to be uh, warmer during the spring equinox than it was by the winter equinox for, for us in New York. And that is because we get more direct sun rays. You see how it's hitting at the equator. So we're facing a little bit more towards the sun and getting us to be warmer. Now, during this time, the sun will rise in the due east and then set due west for us in New York. And you see how it rises further up in the daytime sky. It rises up further in the daytime sky. And that is called that is by the spring equinox. Now, three months after the spring equinox, three months after March 21st, is going to be June 21st. And that is the first day of summer for, that is called the summer solstice. And in, during the summer solstice, the first day of summer, you see how the 23 and a half degree north line, the Tropic of Cancer, is now facing towards the sun, getting the most direct sun rays. Therefore, the, the northern hemisphere is facing towards the sun. Therefore, it's going to be hotter for us in the northern hemisphere and be colder for those in the southern hemisphere. 
but it's going to be hotter for us in the northern hemisphere because we get more direct sun rays and we have more duration of insulation. You can see how more of the sunlight, we're getting more hours of sunlight during that time because we're facing towards the sun. That's called the summer solstice. And since we're facing towards the sun, the sun will rise much higher in our daytime sky, will rise north of due east and set north of due west. It's gonna, re it's gonna go much higher in our daytime sky during the summer solstice. Now, three months after that, you have the September 21st. And on September 21st, you have another equinox that's called the fall equinox. And that is when the sun's rays will hit directly at the equator as well. Again, by the equinoxes, the sun's rays hit directly at the equator. And when it hits it at the equator, we will have, it's called the equinox because we have 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness. So you see for someone in New York, you see how the sun rises due east and sets due west during that time. That is by the fall equinox. So again, you have the four seasons, the winter solstice, we're facing away from the sun. Therefore, it's going to be less direct rays and less hours of sunlight. So it's going to be colder. And then you have three months later, the March 21st, the first day of spring, and it's directly at the equator. Then you have the summer solstice that hits directly at the 23 and a half degree north line. So it's going to be hotter for us in the northern hemisphere. And then you have the autumn equinox three months after that, September 21st, where it hits again at the equator directly, causing the equator to be the hottest and having 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness for all places on Earth. So those are the four seasons and a proof for the Earth revolving around the sun. Hi, this is Donny Rudansky from Regions Made Simpler. And if you like that lesson, be sure to check out regionsmadesimpler.com, which is in the link in the description below. And you can purchase my full course for just $89 for the upcoming region exam. This is the only resource you need to do well on your upcoming New York State region exam. And in the course, you will get a two-part regions review of all the material you need to know in a simplified version, like you saw in that lesson. Plus, I have video review with visuals of past region exams. That is not just me explaining the material, that is also me, as you see in this picture, me with visuals explaining the correct answers and the incorrect answers as well. For just $89, that is less than one typical tutoring session. So you can go to regionsmadesimpler.com, that is in the link in the description below, and check it out. And if you scroll down, you could see the um, a preview of those region review courses and the video review of past region exams. Again, this is only for $89. That is less than one typical tutoring session. And you could get everything you need to know and learn everything in just two to three hours for your upcoming exam and do extremely well.